Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper, the video on high frequency radio ground wave propagation for group communications. This is a theoretical presentation on how HF ground wave communications can enhance your operational security between groups and communities. If you're a Prepper, you may be familiar with these radios here, the Family Radio Service or FRS radios, VHF, UHF, Amateur Radio Handhelds, or General Mobile Radio Service GMRS radios. On the left is a Midland Base Camp radio. This is an FRS and a GMRS radio. In the center is the Ocean Radio. It's an amateur radio handheld for VHF and UHF, and this is very popular in the Prepper community. And on the right, you have a big box store bubble pack radio, which is also an FRS slash GMRS combo radio. And these radios are very popular with the prepping community. They probably form the backbone for our emergency communications plan but their prevalence presents a security risk because bad actors are also buying these very same radios from the same stores and websites that preppers are buying them from. To get an understanding how these radios present the risk, we need to see where they're operating at. Here's the band plan for the U.S. Amateur Radio Service in the United States. The ocean radios operate on two meters, which you see here. And just above two meters is where MERS radios operate. This is a VHF radio. It's a separate radio service, but it's also very popular with preppers because a license isn't required. Above that is 70 centimeters or the UHF band. Again, the ocean radios operate here. And just above that is where the FRS and the GMRS radios operate. But they're all clustered together and they're FM signals and that makes them easy to exploit with a radio scanner or the same equipment. The radios that you're buying, the bad actors are also buying, and they also may be buying scanners as well to monitor your communications and exploit security risk. So to get an understanding how this exploitation takes place, I have an aerial view of a, this could be anywhere, of three groups that are working together, and their distances apart aren't that great. So they lend themselves to use these common radio technologies. Group B and A are only separated by 3.3 miles, and group B and C are only separated by 7.2 miles. So group A and B should have no problem, depending on topology, using FRS radios for communications between those two groups. The distances between group B and C are a little bit greater, so they would probably use the higher power GMRS radios. The three groups may also pool their resources together and install a 2 meter or 70 centimeter amateur radio repeater or maybe even a MERS repeater. And you have the three groups, they're using these three radio services, and they're coordinating their activities well. They're sharing access to common resources like a water source, they're moving between groups, engaging in trade, and they may be conducting joint hunting patrols or security patrols. But as I said earlier, the bad actors also have the same equipment. And they can transit through your area with the same equipment and monitor your communications and identify security vulnerabilities and present a risk to your group. So how can we mitigate this risk? You can use HF radio ground wave for your line of sight communications. Here's three HF radios that are pretty common. You have a base station, Kenwood, in the top left-hand corner. In the lower left-hand corner is the Yaesu FT-817ND. This is my bug out bag radio. And on the right is an ICOM 718, which is an excellent entry-level HF radio for under a thousand bucks. Now many people associate HF radio with its ability to bounce radio waves off the upper atmosphere of the ionosphere and talk great distances regionally and internationally in faraway lands. But there's also a component of HF radio called the ground wave. And under ideal conditions with good topology, your line of sight communications can be up to 50 miles. And you don't need full power to do this. So you could take a 100 watt HF radio and dial the power back to 5 or 10 watts and achieve this ground wave communications, this line of sight communications. So why would you want to do this? How does this mitigate the risk of having your radio communications intercepted? Well, as I said earlier, your ocean radios and your other amateur radio handhelds and base stations, they operate on 2 meters. You have your MERS and your marine band radios that operate just above 2 meters. You have the 70 centimeter band that your ocean radios also operate on. And just above that, you have your FRS and GMRS radios. So a radio scanner can easily pick these communications up. But if you use HF radio ground wave propagation, you shift your group communications to these bands. And now you have nine bands to choose from for communications and thousands of frequency combinations. So when you shift your communications to the HF radio bands, the bad actors who acquired the similar handheld type radios that you have are looking over here for your communications. They're not gonna be able to pick your HF communications up with that equipment. Another layer of operational security you can add to your 
group communications is taking advantage of the variable frequency oscillators included in most modern radios. On this slide I have an example of group A and B using different frequencies in their two VFOs. So here you have group A is communicating with group B and their VFO for transmit is 7178 MHz and group B's receive VFO is programmed to match that and they're receiving 7178 MHz transmission. Now there is a chance a bad actor is going to take an HF radio to the field, take the time to set it up and put an antenna up and they may catch that frequency and hear that conversation. However, with the split VFO, when group B responds, they're transmitting on a different frequency and the bad actor is only going to hear half the radio conversation because when group B responds, they're going to transmit on 3.802 MHz and the VFO for group A is set up to match that separate frequency. This adds another layer of complexity that can help protect your radio communications. You can also vary your modes of operation. When you're running voice, you can change your modes of modulation to AM, FM, or single sideband. You can run data, packet radio, RTTY, or radio telephone teletype, or you can run PACTOR. There's also sound card modes you can use, like PSK31. And there's also image modes. You can send information back and forth using fax modes or slow scan TV modes. If you include HF radio ground wave communications into your emergency communications plan, you can add several layers of complexity that can frustrate a bad actor's efforts to intercept your radio communications by changing your frequencies, splitting your VFOs up, changing your modes to voice, digital, and imagery. You have your groups here. They're using the three typical technologies, but how would they employ high frequency radio ground wave communication? You would stage a licensed amateur radio operator with each one of your groups and give them an HF radio. So for communications between the groups where the most critical information will be passed, coordinating movements of people, medical supplies, foods, things of that nature, a hunting trip, this information can be passed using HF radio. So here group B can transmit out and reach group A and group C. No repeaters needed. Group C can respond and reach group B and group A. And group A can also talk to the other groups. And this is all done using the ground wave propagation. And the bad actors will have a very difficult time monitoring this communications, even if they have HF radios and the skill set to set them up because of the number of bands that are available and the frequency combinations you can use. Again, these radios are critical to your emergency communications plan. I own these radios and they do form the backbone of emergency communications plan for preppers. So I challenge you to think outside the bubble pack and think about adding HF radio ground wave communications for communications between your groups to gain that additional operational security for your emergency communications plan. And again, as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with a video about high frequency radio ground wave propagation for group communications.